Our hands do so much for us. They're an important part of who we are and how we see ourselves. They help us reach out to the world around us and carry out the functions we need to do and want to do. Hands do such a lot for us, even talking. We all know how important our hands are to us and in everyday life, and we understand how to take care of them. We put gloves on when it is cold, or we want physical protection. We protect our hands and our skin with gloves when we are using detergents or other chemicals in the home, and we spend money on products to look after our skin. The skin is the first line of defense for the body, and usually it is the skin on our hands that is subjected to a wide range of hazards. The European Solvents Industry Group, ESSIG, in association with the UK Solvents Industry Association, SIA, and European Safety Federation, ESF, have produced this short film to highlight the types of gloves to use when handling solvents and how to use them safely. In industry, the exposure of people to substances that are hazardous to health is controlled through legislation. The essential risk assessment uses the following basic principles. The best approach is substitution with another product. The next best is to isolate the operator from exposure, for example, through engineering, and a minimum is protection from the substance through use of personal protective equipment. Often, substitution and removal is not possible, so protective equipment is extremely important to prevent substances hazardous to health from affecting the skin itself or passing through the skin and entering the bloodstream. Studies show that at least 50% of the gloves used in the workplace across all industries are not appropriate for the risks or the working conditions encountered. Sometimes, the wrong glove is more dangerous than no glove at all. The European Solvents Industry Group has commissioned this film to provide guidance on how to select the appropriate gloves for the solvent being used, the circumstances in which it is being used, and how to use the gloves in a proper manner when handling the solvent. This film should not be used in isolation and reference should be made to standards, codes of practice and the recommendations from the manufacturers and suppliers of both gloves and solvents. Solvents can have various effects on human health, whether the exposure is by vapour mist or liquid form. They can enter the body by inhalation, by swallowing and through the skin. The way that solvents may enter the body via the skin depends on the volatility and fat solubility of the solvent. Skin health problems can include dermatitis and other skin disorders. Solvents clean and defat not only the product in the process, but also the skin. Most solvents can be absorbed through the skin and enter the bloodstream, especially through cuts and grazes. The effect will depend on the substance and the level, duration and frequency of the exposure. Risk assessment is the basis for the selection of the most appropriate glove and other personal protective equipment. Know what products you are working with and their conditions, such as concentration, temperature and the presence of substances or solvents. Check labels and section 8 of the safety data sheets on the solvent to find the recommended type of protective glove. In addition, check the glove manufacturer's recommendations for the solvents that can be safely handled, based on breakthrough time data as well as degradation ratings. A solvent can get through a glove even if it looks perfect. Also, take into account other types of risks, such as the environment you are working in, the job you have to do, and the duration of the exposure, the physical impact on the glove, and aspects such as grip, comfort, and dexterity. The following information will facilitate the selection of the appropriate glove. First, look for the CE mark on the gloves. In the UK, this would be a CA mark. As chemical protection is always Category 3, close to this mark you must find a four-digit reference number of the notified body that is responsible for the quality testing of the gloves or for monitoring the production. To gain a CE or CA mark, Protective safety gloves for sale in Europe and the UK must meet a number of stringent standards. These standards are maintained by CEN, European Committee for Standardization, and there are various EN standards covering different applications. 
On the glove or packaging, next to the CE or CA mark, you'll find the manufacturer, the size, and various symbols known as pictograms indicating the type of protection offered by the glove. The pictograms and the performance levels are explained in the user instructions supplied with the gloves. This pictogram is used for liquid-proof gloves that have a breakthrough time of more than 30 minutes. For Type A rated gloves, at least six chemicals from the list achieve a breakthrough time of greater than 30 minutes. Type B for at least three chemicals on the list and Type C for at least one chemical with a breakthrough time of greater than 10 minutes. Before use, check expiry date of the gloves you are using and discard any expired gloves in accordance with your local waste disposal conditions. There are other standards for the glove's ability to protect against mechanical hazards, microorganisms, thermal and cold environment hazards. Gloves that can be used to handle solvents can be manufactured from a range of synthetic rubbers or plastics or natural rubber. However, they all have their pros and cons, so you should contact the glove supplier or manufacturer if you are unsure about any of the glove's limitations. Also, remember that the gloves must be compatible with products other than solvents. While latex gloves have the potential for an allergic reaction, these are not normally recommended for handling solvents. Some gloves have overall excellent chemical resistance, but have poor mechanical resistance poor dexterity and limited grip. Some have a high resistance to a wide range of solvents. However, they are water-soluble and will degrade if exposed to water-based solutions, the damp, rain or hand moisture creams. Some gloves only show resistance against a limited range of solvents. Those that show excellent resistance to a wide range of solvents with no other problems can be very expensive. The suitability and durability of a glove material is dependent on usage. For example, frequency and duration of contact needs to be compared to the breakthrough time, required dexterity, temperature and many other environmental factors as well as chemical resistance of the glove materials mentioned. The recommendations given by suppliers are based on laboratory testing with pure chemicals, but manufacturers have comprehensive databases with test results of their gloves against many chemicals, Check with the glove supplier or manufacturer for specific applications. ESIG has produced a chart in its best practice guide on the safe use of gloves, which provides some examples of solvents with the most suitable chemical resistant glove material for protection. Now that you have selected the most appropriate gloves for the specific application, you must now ensure that you use them in the correct manner. Check the gloves. Make sure you're using the right gloves for the job, that they are of the right size, and that they are not damaged or degraded. Some companies only use gloves once, which may be considered best practice. Never use damaged gloves. Wash and dry your hands before you put on your gloves. Do not put gloves on wet hands. Any cuts and grazes must be covered up. Where possible, rings should be removed to prevent damage to the gloves. Avoid contact with solvents as much as possible and make sure liquids do not enter the cuff. In some recommendations, the cuffs of the gloves are turned over to prevent any solvent spillage on the hands from running down the glove and onto the arm. Don't exceed the breakthrough time for the chemical you are working with, taking into account the amount of contact. Don't continue to use or reuse gloves showing signs of damage or degradation, and they should not be shared with anyone else, so that any cross-contamination with unknown substances is avoided. If gloves are to be reused, ensure they are cleaned and stored in a designated location away from other PPE or where they could be contacted by other workers. When removing your gloves, either wash them first or wipe them with a cloth. Avoid contact with your skin and dispose of the wash water or the cloths in an appropriate manner. Remove gloves without touching the outer surface. If the gloves are to be used again, ensure that all of the chemical has been removed or else only use them once. Dispose of gloves in the appropriate receptacle. Remember to remove your gloves when leaving a glove-wearing area to avoid contamination of surfaces that are normally in contact with bare skin, such as door handles. Wash and dry your hands after the gloves have been removed. It may be useful to apply hand cream before and after use of the gloves provided the glove is not degraded by the cream. 
Seek medical attention if you have any irritation or allergic reaction and inform your local health and safety department. A chemical resistant glove does not protect against all possible solvents or chemicals or all possible conditions of use. This film has introduced to you the standards that underpin the manufacture and supply of gloves and has introduced you to the various materials available. It has helped you to check which is the most appropriate glove type for the task in hand, given the solvent to be handled, the duty and the conditions of use and has offered advice on how to use the chosen glove correctly. Solvents have a vital part to play in industry and in many ways enable us to have the products and resources that are fundamental to our daily lives. Solvents are used widely in many industries and it is important that they are used safely. The solvents industry is well regulated and there is information and advice to ensure the risks associated with solvents can be minimised, including our other films about the safe handling of solvents, solvents and static electricity, solvents and IBCs, and safe loading and transportation of bulk solvents by road. ESSIG and the SIA represent Europe's solvents industry by building alliances and sponsoring dialogue with industry partners and downstream users, promoting the safe, responsible and sustainable use of solvents. Thank you for watching this short presentation and if you need more information, please view our comprehensive websites.